On the air, Donald Trump is embracing depictions of political violence while he thumbs his nose at the justice system. On Friday, Trump posted on social media a video depicting an effigy of President Biden bound and restrained in the back of a pickup truck. That truck is emblazoned with the words, Trump 2024. We are choosing not to show you that video. No, 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 I don't need you to protect my sensibilities. Not when Trump has his boot on our necks. I'll show you the video. Trump tweeted this out to his followers. Why? Why do you think? I don't know what happened to the Republican Party. That's not true. I know exactly what happened. A political party with but one win in the popular vote for president in the last 36 years panicked. Ten years ago, they opened the door and let this guy in, and they haven't recovered since. I like to punch him in the face. This is not the first time Trump has physically threatened people. But like Michael Cohen says, up until recently, he veiled his threats in mob talk. He would never say, that guy deserves to die. He would go, I've heard people talk that something might happen to him. I don't know, it's what people are saying. If anyone knows how Donald Trump speaks in code, it's me. So let me break it down for you for what Donald was really saying and what it conveyed to Mike Pence. Now, during the January 6th committee hearing, we heard that before the January 6th insurrection, Donald Trump told Mike Pence that he would not be his friend anymore if Pence did not help him overthrow the election results. But that was then, and this is now. Where before in 2017, Trump might nuance a directive to white supremacists with mob talk. Proud boys, stand back and stand by. Or after a pro-Confederate protester killed a young woman, he said this. Very fine people on both sides. Now Trump has totally dropped the thin veil and threatens Americans with violence regularly. We're not taking this White House. We're going to fight like hell, I'll tell you right now. This is the way they're going to try and win. And that's not the way it goes. That'll be bedlam in the country. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. And most of America, I mean, a good 275 million Americans sat back and watched the whole thing like it was a Discovery Channel special with a pack of jackals cornering a gazelle. And like the frog in the pan of warm water, Trump is turning up the heat. And I'm not sure the 270 million frogs get what's happening. Trump is advocating two scenarios. The first occurs should he win an electoral victory and become president. I say electoral victory because he will most likely lose a popular vote again, this time between five and eight million votes, a projection by pollsters and social media experts. And this scenario includes the events already in motion. Should Trump's trials be delayed to the point that he's not convicted before November the 5th, or if they proceed and he is convicted between then and inauguration, Trump will tell the Attorney General, Kid Rock, to dismiss the charges. Or if he's convicted awaiting a sentencing or appeal, he'll pardon himself. Now, you think the Kid Rock thing is a joke? Far from it. Trump won't make the same mistake again by appointing traditional Republicans to key positions. He learned that after Kelly, Tillerson, McMaster, Esper, and Milley all turned on him. No, Trump will empty out the clown cabinet and fill those positions with loyalists whose only job is to sit next to him and do their best Lauren Boebert impression. And before I get to the scenario number two, this is a guy you need to worry about. While Trump is a tough guy wannabe, he's a pussy. I mean, the dude spends three hours a day on his hair and spray tan. Trump will listen to the former general and Nazi in training, Mike Flynn. I mean, there is a spiritual war and there is a political war. Georgia's election probe is advancing, seeking testimony from former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn's whole life is really a story of culture war from start to finish. From Army General. I am a guy who spent my entire career thinking about the enemies that we are going to face. To conspiracy theorist. And we want you to know that we will not stand for a lie. General Flynn, you know, he's a living martyr. Be proud as Christians, be proud as patriots. This idea that this was spiritual warfare, it's not even an undertone. The battle for the soul of America, using the church as a tool. Is this a spiritual awakening? You bet it is. Flynn was Trump's national security advisor with access to almost as many secrets as Trump hides in his bathroom, and who was at the time a secretly paid consultant to Turkey, not exactly a burgeoning democracy, and then was later convicted for lying to the FBI. And of course Trump pardoned him and meets with him frequently. This guy is Trump's main henchman who not only propagated the election lie, he called for Trump to invoke martial law and collect all of the ballot boxes. Trump will not stand in his way. To the contrary, Trump will encourage him. The other guy I worry about is the foldout for this month's homeless quarterly. He was directing the former military and right-wing nationalists on January the 6th. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's all converging and now we're on, as they say, the point of attack. Right, the point of attack tomorrow. I'll tell you this, 
It's not going to happen like you think it's going to happen. If Trump should win, who will stop him? SCOTUS? Not likely. He's already pledged to prosecute Biden, as well as MSNBC and even left-leaning social media. And while the Liz Cheney's and Mark Espers of the world are saying this. Look, it was obviously a very shocking and, and troubling remark for the president to suggest uh, that we shoot protesters, we shoot Americans in the streets of the nation's capital. And, and needless to say, I and I suspect others there were all taken aback by that. No one is listening. This is a different world and no one is saying that out loud. But the other scenario is equally disturbing. Does anyone have any doubt that Trump will claim the election is rigged should he lose? It's the military. I hope, I hope there won't be that. But I mean, it's not like he's gonna have any support in the military, right? Mike Flynn claims that a huge chunk of the US military supports Trump and the significant number of former police and military on January 6th backs that up. This is the evolution of a sociopath who is now calling for the assassination of a sitting president. Think I'm exaggerating? Well, again, watch this. I get it, I get it. It's only his truth social account, a pale imitation of the train wreck formerly known as Twitter. But Trump isn't posting this for you and me. He's preparing a violent coup, should he lose, and a vengeful attack, should he win. Let's go back to the MSNBC opening where they state they won't show the video. That attempt to protect our sensibility is a train that left the station in 2015. What I just told you sounds preposterous, but let these sink in. 80% of Trump supporters and the Republican Party believe the election was either outright stolen or had irregularities. And the idea of a dictator? I want to be a dictator. This guy makes a sensible case for one. Would you rather have four years of Donald Trump as a dictator or four years of President Biden reelected? You, you know, you don't have to like the words that come out of the man's mouth, but sometimes in life we all need a good paddling from the principal. But violence? Look. When people are convinced, not only by a psychopath, but by these gutless chicken parts on Fox News, that an election has been taken from them, violence doesn't seem like such a stretch. You have to go to get justice. But that's just for the normally confused Fox News viewer. The Mike Flynn faction, they're not confused. They want this to happen. They've never really liked men in suits telling fatigued soldiers which way to march, especially when they have a tremendous advantage in firepower and experience. There are over 300 million guns in this country. And remember this, when Trump told the NRA that if Hillary was elected, the solution was in their hands. If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. Trump has threatened and promised violence for anyone who stands in his way. We are choosing not to show you that video. So yes, MSNBC, don't get weak on me now. Trump isn't hiding his real intent and we shouldn't be hiding the proof. Damn right. Who's with me? Time to pack it up. I'm just getting warmed up. This isn't their Republican Party anymore. Am I wrong? Yes! Tick tock! We're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> Follow, like, and hit notifications as Really American keeps you up to date on the latest Republican cult lie in this very important year. For Really American... I think he's crazy. I'm Chip Franklin. <laughs>